I find myself doing a few beginner's guide to things gun related. Well, today, following a recent request, is all about the real starting point. How to set up your first PCP air rifle. <laughs> Hello and welcome to uh, AAR. <laughs> yes, it's newbie time today and as always the first thing I will do is apologise to the seasoned and expert shooters out there. But whilst this isn't aimed at you guys, who knows, maybe you can learn a thing or two or more especially send any comments through that you think will help all the new starters. The first thing to say is welcome to the world of PCP or pre-charged pneumatic air guns. More especially, air rifles. So, what do you do when you get home with your new pride and joy, all nice and shiny and newly boxed up looking lovely? Then you realise you've got a lot of nice new boxes, but it can be quite a daunting task to put this lot together to turn yourself into the amazing hunter or sniper that you saw yourself as. Let's see what you're likely to have bought, shall we? I'm going to use the example of the sub £500 package from Vector Air, the Gamo GX40. In the pack, you're going to have the main rifle, the scope or telescopic sight, the silencer or moderator, a, bag, a tin of pellets, a bag, targets and a couple of freebies in this case as well. Let's start with the rifle first. This has a couple of things in the box you're going to need. Firstly, the filler probe. This is very important and is going to be needed to be kept safe and protected because this is your only way of getting air into your gun from your filling source. This is a brass coloured item and has a thread on one end and a couple of O-rings on the other end. These O-rings need to be looked after and usually the best thing to do is add a drop of silicon oil on them. This helps them when being inserted into the filler port and protects them and extends their lifespan. Often in the same packet are a few spare o-rings so it's a good idea to keep those safe because it is a perishable item but it should last you years and years if you look after it. Now then that thread. It's at this point it's worth looking at how you're going to fill your gun and from what source. Because you can use a pump, a compressor or a diver's tank. Whichever one you use it may or may not come with the correct fitting on the hose for your filler probe. If not, you're going to need a fitting. They're not expensive and even have a quick snap option to be able to use for different probes for different guns. If you need to fit an adapter, make sure you use the supplied washer. And this is one of the only things you will need to get the spanners on and tighten up reasonably tight to ensure there are no leaks. Having removed your gun out of your box, it's time to insert your nicely, very lightly oiled probe into the filler port. Make sure this is done squarely and should fit nice and smoothly in place. Then connect up your preferred air source, then start the airflow. If it's from a tank, the secret here is to do this slowly. It isn't a race, because it is possible to blow the seals on your gun 
or worse. If you rush it or, worse still, overfill it, the tank or cylinder on the gun is built to withstand high pressures, but there is a burst seal on most guns and this will blow to protect you if you do overfill it, which then results in a trip back to a gunsmith to get it fixed. It's very important that you are aware of what your maximum fill pressure is for your gun. In this case, 200 bar, even though it says 232 on the side. This is a sub 12 foot pounds and only goes up to the 200. It's always worth checking on your manual in the box. If you are using a pump, again, keep an eye on the gauge on the pump and the one on the gun in case the pump gauge isn't accurate. If using a compressor, then make sure you don't leave the gun and compressor alone. Stay with it and monitor the fill pressure. Most compressors have an automatic cutoff pressure, but it could fail or have been set incorrectly. So never leave a gun filling on a compressor unattended or anywhere else for that matter. Once you've slowly filled it and you're up to pressure, it's time to remove the probe. But don't, under any circumstances, just try to remove the probe without first bleeding off the air from the filling source. This is usually a small bleed screw and will result in a sharp hiss of air. This is natural and is only the surplus air that's been left in the pipe from when you were filling it from the tank or your pump or your compressor. If you're filling from a tank, don't forget to close off the main valve before doing this, or it will simply empty your tank of air at the same time. So that can now be removed, and don't forget to return your filler port dust cover to keep out all the dust, dirt, and anything else, and keep those seals nice and clean. Now you're all filled, it's time to attach that scope. Now I have done a full video on how to zero a scope and that's available to watch here and it's well worth taking the time to do that because all I'm going to do at this moment in time is a quick version. Get your rifle nice and secure, ideally on a bench or in a stand. Then pop your mounts onto your top rail in the approximate position you're going to want your scope to sit thinking about where your magazine needs to be loaded and ensure this isn't blocked. At this point it's worth noting that quite often on mounts there are two different ones, a front one and a rear one. The rear one has a protruding uh, bolt, stay, forgive me, this needs to be wound all the way back in for the top of a PCP. It's ideally aimed at springers and isn't necessary for a PCP and it will in fact get in the way of what you're trying to do. It's also at this point you need to position them for your correct eye relief so you get the best view through the scope to suit you. So, offering up the scope to get a rough idea as to where you want this to sit to get the maximum picture through the scope. You may have to move this forwards or backwards. So what we're going to do initially is just do this lightly. There's no tightening up at this stage. So once you've dropped your new scope into the open mounts and you've got that positioning right, also make sure it's fitted level. So you're probably going to need to look through it to line it up correctly at this point. Once comfortable, pop on those top mounts and start to tighten them up. 
and I stress this point, do not over tighten any of these fittings. It is normal for the top of the mount to have a slight gap between it and the bottom half of the mount. Do not try to squeeze them together until they touch. You will ruin the scope. I've seen it happen. When you start to pinch them up, use the supplied hex key and turn a little bit on each screw, working on opposites pretty much the same way you would when tightening the nuts or bolts, depending on what you've got, on a car wheel. Little bit at a time. You notice I'm putting no pressure on this at all. And if you also notice, I'm using the hex key with the small end at the top. Don't try and use the main one. It's not designed for that at all. So, keep going around nice and steady. And all you're doing is you're nipping them. You're just, just tightly pinching it. And under no circumstances are you going to give it any sort of force. So you do it slowly, slowly, keep going round until there's no play left in the opposites. And as I say, you'll have a gap between the two. Once you know you've got it in place, also tighten up the ones on the rail. Once you think you have it all in place, check by looking through the scope. If you're happy and it isn't in the way of the magazine or anything else, then give it that tiny last check over, but do not over tighten. Once fitted, your next job is to pop on your silencer. This is pre-threaded and needs to go on the end of the barrel, being very careful not to cross-thread it. It should go on very, very smoothly with no effort whatsoever. Keep it going. And then once you're at the end, just a little, just literally a little squeeze to make sure it's on. One of the biggest problems you have with people as well is when they're shooting, they say the gun has gone off target. It's not accurate anymore. Sometimes it can simply be... that the silencer or moderator or suppressor has just worked its way loose. And as you can see, tiny little bit of thread left gives quite a lot of movement. So just nip it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Don't get any spanners on it. OK? Incidentally, while I think about it, in the case of the Gamo Pack, there is an ABS, ultra lightweight silencer in the pack as a free gift. This is also threaded and must go on straight. Bear in mind that this is polymer and will easily cut a thread if it's cross-threaded because the barrel is hard metal and it will completely ruin the silencer. Again, don't over-tighten it once it's on. The next thing to do is load up the magazine that's supplied with the gun. These can be very different from gun to gun and manufacturer to manufacturer, so please check your manual for each individual gun. This is the BSA, or Gamma magazine, which is tried and tested and a real dream to load and use. Simply, drop in your pellet head first, rotate slightly to reveal the next hole, Drop in your next pellet head first, and so on. And keep doing that until you've got all ten loaded up. The magazine is designed to rotate when each pellet is fired, and then it pre-positions itself for the next round. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? To insert this, make sure your gun is first of all in safe mode by moving the safety switch into safe. 
whatever that may look like on your individual gun. Then pop in your loaded magazine once you've pulled back on the bolt to allow it to be accessed. Now bear in mind, you push that bolt forward, you have now loaded a pellet into the barrel. This gun is now live. And the only thing stopping it firing is that safety. So at this point, be careful. So your first job from here on is to set the zero on the scope. This is done by firing a pellet at a target out at your preferred distance. This shot is likely to be quite a way off your aim point. Move the crosshairs over to where the pellet hit the target whilst keeping your gun steady. Again, a vice-like setup is going to be the most efficient. Then adjust the settings on your scope using the top and side turrets. Adjusting these turrets can be different for different scopes. In this example on the Hugo, you will need to lift the turret tops to be able to adjust them. The top turret adjusts the up and down or elevation. The side turret covers off the left and right adjustment or windage. Again, in this case, it needs to be pulled out the adjuster before you can turn it. Using these two adjusters, move the crosshairs back to the target center without moving the gun. Once they're on target center, fire the gun again and the pellet should now be on target or may need a slight adjustment still. But this is done in small stages using the turrets until you're spot on or zeroed. Once completed, lock the turrets off back into place to stop them accidentally being moved. And there you have it. You're all set up ready for some really great fun shooting. At this point, it's just worth mentioning the bag. This is big enough to take the gun and the scope and the silencer all fitted and will help protect your new pride and joy from simple knocks and bangs. It isn't a hard case that will take some serious hammer so you will still need to treat it with some respect. It is worth noting when you carry this and if you're using your shoulder strap it's narrow end down. Why? Because the zip ends on the bottom and if you've got that not quite zipped up and you're upside down you could lose your gun or at very least it drops out the bag and gets damaged. The preference really would be using the carry handles because it's actually quite nicely balanced. And they're actually a really good bag to boot. One other thing to mention is having your gun in your bag with the silencer on at the end not a problem if however you're going to use the polymer ultra lightweight silencer it's an idea to keep that off the gun when you're carrying it because as we've said at the end of the day it's polymer it's not steel One final thing is, when you're transporting your gun out and about, do not have the magazine loaded and in the gun. Keep it empty and not in the same bag as a best practice. Naturally, don't leave your gun unattended anywhere and please keep your gun safe when at home and not left loaded. It does need to keep air in the cylinder to ensure the seals are kept in place. So you don't need to bleed the air out, but do remove the magazine. Well, with that lot done, it's probably time for a cuppa. To ensure your gun has a long and healthy life, do keep it dry and occasionally give it a wipe over with a very lightly oiled cloth. 
Hopefully you're all nicely set up and you've found this useful. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up. If you're new to shooting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We cover off all kinds of issues, guns and ancillary stuff. Click the alarm bell and maybe check out all this lot for a lot more information and chats and help. Thank you as always to Vector Air for supplying all this lot for me to do this starter video. And thank you to the more experienced shooters who are subscribed to the channel. You guys are really understanding and always happy to help the new starters to our sport. Thank you. For now though, stay safe, shoot safe and thank you so much for watching.